Let's talk about Iodin Chronicle 100 Heroes. This is an upcoming JRPG developed by Rabbit and Bear Studios, an independent studio led by individuals who had created and worked on the Suikoden series. I was able to play the closed beta as I'm a backer of the Kickstarter campaign that started in 2020. This is going to be a spoiler free video. I am not going to be showing any footage out of respect for the developers who sent out a message asking backers to refrain from streaming as to avoid spoilers. I am, however, going to be sharing screenshots that will be intermixed with the different trailers playing in the background. With all that out of the way, let's dive in. The closed beta was pretty sizable. I was able to complete it in a little over four hours and my impressions are generally positive. If you're a Suikoden fan and are mad at Konami for leaving the franchise on hiatus, Iodin Chronicle has you covered. Let's kick things off by talking about the combat. Combat will feel very familiar to Suikoden veterans. Parties consist of six characters that make up two rows, and it is recommended that magic users and ranged attackers make up the rear, while damage dealing melee characters take up the front. There is a slot for a support character as well, which is interesting in a mechanic that was not available during the demo, but it is something I am looking forward to in the full release. Rune lenses allow you to use special abilities and magic, and there is a distinction between the two. Lens abilities require SP, and this is accumulated by committing actions during combat. And it doesn't matter what you do either. You can attack, defend, use items. As long as you're doing something, you will accumulate SP. Magic requires mana use. And probably the most interesting thing here is that when you're able to slot a magic rune, you are granted multiple levels of that magic. Meaning it goes from like one to three and it shows you the various levels and the mana cost as well, which I thought was really cool. I really enjoyed the balance between the two and I love the fact that the lens abilities are spectacles in combat. Combination attacks make a return and I believe the game does a really good job of introducing them. These attacks require SP so unlike Suikoden you cannot continuously abuse them. Both characters also must have SP but they are worth saving up for. One of my favorite additions to combat is the ability to auto battle. It needs to be said though that this system should not be abused. And if you are going to auto battle, you need to set individual strategies for characters or they will literally do whatever they want in combat. And this includes consuming items and using spells when otherwise melee combat would suffice. There are also multiple boss battles found in the demo and these fights can be fairly lengthy and challenging. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but just know that boss encounters are vastly different from the usual enemy encounters and I really enjoyed all of them. Moving on, let's briefly discuss character recruitment. As I've stated before, I'm not going to go into any spoilers, but the trailers that are currently available do go into detail about the different characters that make up Iodin Chronicle, and honestly, it's very impressive. Character recruitment in this game is very simple, but also really entertaining. Any character that seems like they're out of place in a specific area is going to be someone that you can recruit. If they happen to have a character portrait, more than likely they are someone that you can recruit or they're an important NPC. Once you approach these characters, you're gonna be prompted with a cutscene that introduces their personality. And some can be really funny, but others can be described as very odd. The fact that every recruitable character has a voice actor in this game is great and really adds a personal touch to each character. Like the Suikoden series, not every character you meet is going to jump at the opportunity to work with you. Some will have specific requirements, and while I assume most will be relatively simple, I am looking forward to seeing how hard you'll have to work to recruit specific characters. Regardless, the characters I was able to recruit in the opening areas all had different abilities, and even one took up multiple party positions, which I thought was really interesting, and something I'm looking forward to seeing if there are other characters that do that as well. Next up, let's talk about the production values. I played this on PC, and I really think this game looks really good. It's very charming, colorful, and has some really strong particle effects. There are certain attacks in Iodin Chronicle that just pop off the screen, and it's very satisfying to watch different characters leap into action. It's all very impressive, and some of the animations that are shown are really fluid. There are also some bosses that really surprised me in regard to how detailed they were. I was actually shocked at one of the bosses because they do a close up on this character and I was like, damn, that looks excellent. I was not expecting that. <laughs> the various towns you're able to visit were filled with NPCs and some areas featured fairly detailed interiors, 
and there is some really good use of lighting that really surprised me. The first time you visit a rune shop, for example, you see a bunch of different colors. The lighting's really good. I was kind of shocked, honestly, about how colorful everything was. I just thought everything looked pretty great, and I think that took me by surprise a bit. The voice acting overall is solid, but there are some lines that are delivered in a way that can come off as unintentionally hilarious. There's one scene in particular that really acts as a jumping off point for the plot and the delivery of a certain line made me laugh. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't have because what was happening in the scene was serious and somber. But for the most part, what's here is really good. Music wise, it's fantastic. And it doesn't matter where you are. You can be out in the overworld, in a dungeon, in combat, or just roaming around town. The music is excellent and the pieces available in the beta, and I assume that they're gonna be available in the main game, complement the specific situations you find yourself in. I loved it. Now my time with Ayat and Chronicle wasn't perfect. I felt like there was far too much time in between enemy encounters. I don't know how anyone else is going to feel about that, but when I was in this game, and I was going about in the overworld. I didn't get into a single combat encounter. And even when I was exploring a dungeon, it felt like it took forever for an encounter to take place. And I don't know if that's just the product of the beta, but let me be clear when I say this, boss fights in this game really do require you to be a certain level. You're gonna get absolutely smashed if you aren't. This game can be really punishing. And as you know, your stats matter alongside your equipment. But if you're just low level roaming into some of these boss fights that can be fairly lengthy and fairly drawn out, you're gonna get killed. And it's one of those things where I was like, I don't want these to become so resource intensive where I'm just kind of going through all of my healing items, but that's what it felt like early on. And even though I got into the swing of things later, I did notice I was going into fights fairly under leveled. And I think that needs to be fixed because otherwise it's going to be really frustrating when you're getting into some of these boss fights that you feel you want to be prepared for, but you just aren't. Plus, when you're trying to recruit characters that have kill requests, it shouldn't take two to three minutes to find an encounter. The rate was just too low. That's just my honest opinion on it. Beyond that, I don't have any major complaints. The opening is a bit slow, but once it ramps up, it left me wanting more. I also believe that after playing the beta, that this is the modern Suikoden that the fan base has been waiting for. Seriously, combat, music, story, character profiles, and the various mechanics that make up the world are Suikoden in nature. It really feels like a blend of two and five, which just so happened to be my favorite in the series. The recent trailer for Aiden Chronicle, which has been playing in the background alongside other trailers, goes into greater detail regarding the characters and overall plot. But it also hints at other mechanics like town building and the various mini games. These aren't featured in the closed beta in the opening hours, but they are hinted at. And listen, if Konami had given Rabbit and Bear Studios the Suikoden franchise, Aiden Chronicle is a modern continuation of the series, and one that I do believe will make Yoshitaka Miriyama, the creator of Suikoden and the director of this game, proud. And that's gonna do it for this video. If you happen to like the content, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. And if you played the closed beta, leave a comment below on how you feel so far about the game. I'm Ken from Pixelated Thoughts. I'll talk to you next time.